Hi everyone. I hope you're all having a great week. Well, we're finally here in Maine and well, I guess I shouldn't say we're finally here. I'm finally in my studio. <laughs> We've been in Maine for almost three weeks now and uh, wow, that's kind of hard to believe, but We've been really busy unpacking and there's still a lot of unpacking to do, but I'm super happy to say that my studio is finally done. I'm sure a few little things might change along the way, but for now I'm really happy with um, the placement of everything and how I've been able to take a relatively large space. I had a pretty large studio in Vermont and um, Next to my studio, I also had a, we, uh, an exercise slash zen space. And so the area was quite big and I was able to somehow fit everything in this smaller room. And I know this is still not a small room. This is actually uh, a relatively large room, um, but it's got everything that I used to have in both my art studio and my zen space. And, uh, it feels cozy and yesterday when I was done putting the final touches on the studio I just sat down and really took in every little nook and cranny of this room and I did so with so much gratitude in my heart as I'm feeling so excited and so thankful to be here and to have this beautiful space. And I am especially thankful and excited that I finally get to start painting again. So I'll give you a quick little tour via some pictures that I took and then we'll get going with this week's video. I was fortunate enough to have the choice between two spaces in our home to put my studio in. One was the basement and the other one was what I ultimately chose as this bedroom to turn into my studio. And I chose it because it had a lot of natural light. The basement would have been much darker and I don't think I would have liked it as much. There were hardwood floors in the room and I really wanted to make sure that I protected it because as soon as I start painting, I am gonna make a mess in here. And you know, as an artist, I want to give myself the freedom to make that mess because if I try to restrain myself too much, then it reduces my creativity and I don't wanna do that. So we covered the floor with uh, some inexpensive mats that we bought at a local store. And I put a layer of plastic before I laid down those mats. And then I started to bring in my furniture and slowly but surely the chaotic mess that you saw at one point started to transform into my studio. And all along the way, my little Garou was right there. Um, I guess accompanying me in this journey and I, I'm really happy that he was there with me. I was able to put my pegboards up like I had them in my previous studio. Um, I put up some more from um, ones that I had from before and I really am super happy with how everything has come out. It's um, for all the chaos that it was when I first brought everything in, it really has turned into my own little Zen creative space. And I'm super thankful and happy that this is the new place I'll be using to create for the years to come. As you can see, going looking through the, the studio door, there's still quite a bit of mess outside in the house. It's, uh, it's such a long process to unpack after a move and it can be really tiring. And honestly, I, I have not been able to focus on anything else. I just wanted to have a chance to to really set my art studio the way I wanted it to be. I could have potentially started creating, I guess, before everything was completely set up, but I knew I wouldn't be as comfortable to do so as I am now. So this is it. This is my studio, and I'm so happy I get to share it with you. And I'm excited that I now get to start painting. Thank you for bearing with me while I was going through this move. Um, it's still a process. Like I said, we still have a lot of unpacking to do, but for the most part, I'm ready to get into my studio and the rest of the house will slowly but surely get unpacked as we go along. <laughs> so again, thank you for bearing with me as we were going through this process. And um, 
I'm looking forward to exploring our new state and having fun in my new studio. Enjoy the video. So here I am finally working in my new studio. Though this week's video is being edited in my studio, I will be very honest and I'll let you know that it was actually filmed. All the footage that you're going to be seeing today was actually filmed while I was in Vermont. I really wanted to make sure that I put as little pressure as I could on myself during our move. Uh, it was a huge endeavor for us to pack up a whole entire house and then to move everything to a new state and a new house um, to get unpacked and honestly it's it's still going like I showed you earlier <laughs> there are still boxes in the house everywhere but I'm really super happy that my studio is finally set up and this week I will start to film some paintings uh, some new paintings new videos in my studio and everything you'll see moving forward will be from this new studio of mine in Maine. I'm not really sure what to call this week's video. Um, it's going to be an abstract, sort of geologic if you will, uh, but not geologic in the sense like almost like last week's was more geologic in the uh, normal sense where the colors were more earthy. Um, but I really wanted to work with some bright colors this week and it's uh, going to be a bit of a take I guess on some of my past neurographic art videos or I guess my version of neurographic art and I'm going to use some really bright colors to create something that I enjoy but I'm trying to keep it simple at this point as you know I was in the middle of a move and um, so when things are stressful, it's always easiest and best to try and keep things as simple as possible. So I tend to turn to doing things that are very familiar to me and things that just bring me joy. Because at this point in time, you know, when there's a lot of, a lot going on, the best thing to do is to, to do, um, I guess, to, to just be kind to ourselves and to do things that we enjoy to try and take some of that pressure that we're feeling off our shoulders. So I started my painting, my little watercolor painting this week by first drawing a few lines just to use as a guide. My biggest guide was really my colors. And unfortunately here I had forgot to hit uh, record when I was filming and so I didn't record the very top part of the painting but when I start adding the colors to the bottom portion of the painting you'll see that it's a, a similar set of colors that I'll be using. So I drew some guidelines and then I started going in with um, that turquoise that I really love. That turquoise uh, teal color from Kramer Pigmente that I really love. I bought it recently and <laughs> I've loved it so much that I've created quite a few paintings using that very color. I added a little bit of green gold to the middle and then some brighter blue. And on the top portion, much like I'm going to be doing here on the bottom, I'm adding some nickel azo yellow, some quinacridone deep gold, and I'm trying to keep things bright. Um, I really love bright colors. They really make me happy and so I am doing things, I'm, I'm painting for YouTube of course, this is a YouTube video, but I'm painting for myself and when I paint for myself I like to do things that are joyful to me and definitely working with bright colors is one of the ways that I enjoy painting the most because there's something about color, it just um, really does something to my mood. And when I'm using bright, cheerful colors, it tends to help bring joy into my life and it makes me feel happy. So this was completely unintentional, but looking at the shape that I created in my painting, it almost reminds me of a stretched out North America. <laughs> I, I don't know why it ended up being like that. It's, it's of course not representative of North America. That was 
definitely not my intention, but it sort of does look like it. And in, in some sense, it's almost like a reverse of what you would see on planet Earth, because what here would look like North America would, is the color that you would typically see more in the ocean than you would on a landmass. And then the colors around what I'm calling my North America look more uh, earthy. Although, you know, somewhat earthy, I should say. But that was, again, not the point. I, I'm basically just trying to create something from my mind and my imagination. And, you know, some things, sometimes when I'm painting, shapes come up that uh, remind me of something else. And, it, and I just find it kind of interesting that this is what came to mind when I started looking at this. So you'll notice that as I'm painting, I, I tend to, to work wet on wet a lot. Um, and the reason I do this is because I really do like it when my colors blend together, especially when they're meant to blend together and form or, or um, yeah, form some other interesting colors that, uh, that go well. This is quinacridone deep gold and it really does blend extremely well with nickel azel yellow and I find that that nickel azel yellow tends to keep that quinacridone deep gold really bright and that's why one of the reasons I like working with these two colors in conjunction a lot. You'll see that a lot in, um, in uh, many of my paintings. But that quinacridone deep gold also creates some interesting shades of color when it mixes with the blue and the green um, and it tends to turn things a little bit more like make things a little bit more earthy so that's one of the reasons I like to use them uh, but the blues and the Nicolazo yellow and the quinacridone deep gold they're contrasting they um, they really create good contrast and that's because they're complementary colors and complementary colors really tend to make each other um, come to life, if you will. And so it makes sense for me visually to use these colors together and it's a combination of colors that I, I really find pleasing to work with. So here I'm just working with water. I actually haven't added any color to my brush. I'm just going in with some water and uh, here I did add some color, but I'm using a lot of water with my mixes and I'm trying to blend the colors into each other and try to create also some different textures by moving my brush and the water in different ways on my paper. So after letting this painting, this background, I guess, dry, I then went in with my fountain pen and I started to create some shapes and I usually try to create the shapes moving along with the different shapes that were creating that sorry that were created in my painting as I was adding the colors and it's that's just how I work intuitively I let the colors and my background and everything that sort of presents on the paper tell me what to do next and so I'm looking for different little shapes in the background and I'm basically using my pen to either go around these shapes and create some other shapes using my pen. Now this is not typically what neurographic art looks like but when I'm working in this way I am creating shapes that I'm then going to color around. And this is the part for me that reminds me of neurographic art, is the going in between the shapes and really sort of rounding off the, the shapes, if you will, by adding that dark contrast of black. I find doing this type of work to be very meditative and therapeutic because it's repetitive. There's not a whole lot of thought that needs to go into it. But it's, uh, it's just very pleasing, especially when you're using a color, a dark contrasting color like black against these big, bold, bright colors in the background. You really see the shapes that I'm creating with the black ink start to come to life. And I enjoy that. 
and when I'm creating, I love to do things that bring me enjoyment. For me, that's the whole point of creating. I guess if, if I didn't get any enjoyment from the process, I don't really know why I would do it. But I do enjoy and get some satisfaction of out of the creative process. I, I get a lot of joy from it. In fact, that's probably why I've done it most of my life because I just love it so much. As I'm going around with my fountain pen, creating these little rounded shapes that um, really remind me of gemstones. They remind me of turquoise gemstones, some of, uh, of which, you know, you may have seen in jewelry. Um, they're, so I guess in some ways this is almost looking a little bit like, uh, like I said, it, it's, it is geologic and it's in some sense because of the fact that these little shapes that I'm creating are reminding me of these gemstones. Um, it's not your typical geologic abstract, but yeah, the, it, those colors, those blues and greens that mix together really are reminiscent to me of the colors that you would see in turquoise stones. And so it's uh, kind of fun to bring this together and I'm imagining that this is like a little crack of filled with these gemstones and uh, it's like a little treasure that you're finding in the earth almost. Does it make sense? No, probably not. <laughs> uh, most of my art doesn't necessarily make sense. It's just, um, I guess, my imagination. I'm letting my imagination go wild and I'm, you know, having fun creating as I go along. This part here where I'm coloring the spaces in between those little rock or gemstone shapes that I've created, this is the part that reminds me mostly of neurographic art. It's um, not very hard to do, but it's, it's again a very meditative process because it's, it's just simply going in between the shapes and coloring in all those spaces between the shapes. And because it's just such a very simple process to do, it's, it's, it is very meditative. And um, in that sense, I, I also find it very therapeutic because there's nothing stressful about it. And I don't like to feel stressed when I'm creating. In fact, when I feel stressed, I don't generally like creating I just um, I feel like my body needs something else and and sometimes maybe if I am creating while I'm stressed it's to step away from that stress and to get my mind off things so that I can finally get back to a place of feeling more zen after coloring in the spaces in between my little gemstones I pulled out my fine tip black point uh, black pen and I'm just starting to add some very simple vertical lines in different areas of the painting where I feel they would add some interest to the painting. And again, just to keep things as simple as possible, I'm letting my background guide me in this process. I'm looking at the different shapes that look like they might um, be highlighted by creating those lines and I simply go in and create simple vertical lines nothing complicated just again a little bit of repetitive repet how do you say that word repetitive <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking about it in French or what was going on there but the word just was not coming to me so I'm just doing some repetitive little uh, vertical strokes and I'm creating some visual interest um, in the painting by drawing attention to specific areas of the painting. I'll move in just a little bit closer so you can see what it is I'm talking about. Um, sometimes those lines, because I'm using a fine tip pen, are not very evident, and um, but they do serve a function and in fact they sort of highlight that um, bit of quinacridone deep gold that I painted around that turquoise shape 
And so I feel that that is uh, one of the reasons why it's cool to use these little ver ver vertical lines. Oh my goodness, I'm having such a hard time speaking this morning. I think it's the, the um, I'm feeling a bit tired. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that sometimes happens. I get a bit tongue tied. In fact, sometimes my, my, when I'm tired, my husband and I will be having a conversation and all of a sudden I start speaking French to him, even though he doesn't understand French. <laughs> And that's usually the surest sign that I am tired uh, because it's like my brain can't function in anything but my maternal language. Another neat way to either draw attention to certain shapes or to maybe make certain shapes stand out in a painting especially when I'm doing a mixed media project like this one, is to use stippling. Um, it really is a very simple thing to do, just, you know, little dots of, of ink around a certain shape, and it can create the effect or the look of something that is standing out from the paper, if you will, because it creates a bit of shading. and um, it's just such an easy thing to do. So I love to do it and I do it very often in my paintings. Here I'm doing it also in some of those little vertical lines that I drew in my background. And I'm not doing it because of anything but the fact that my intuition said, why don't you add a little bit of those little dots or that little stippling in those areas. and. I really like the effect of that so I'm glad I did it and I'll probably repeat that in some paintings moving forward as well. Now having worked a lot with black for the last little while it's also good and I also like to go in with white because there is a fair amount of contrast and some light values in the painting especially at the bottom portion of the painting there where the Nicolazo yellow is more um, light and I uh, was applied in a lighter wash but I do want to create more light contrast and so using my white pen is generally a good way to do that and when the pen works really well especially when it's new the ink flows super well and I find that this pen tends to be one of the best way ways for me to add some white so I'm just going into those little stones I guess if you will and I'm adding some white here and there where I feel like it would help create some interest and some contrast. When my pen is getting older and the ink isn't flowing quite as well as it did when it was newer I tend to turn to gesso. So in this case, I just pulled out a bit of gesso that I put on the cap of um, the gesso bottle and I'm using a stylus to go in with a dotting tool, the dotting tool on the stylus and I'm just adding some more of that white uh, around the shape. Again, just to create some interest. And then when I feel like I need to add a little bit more, I pull out my micro mini brush and I paint over some of the shapes that I feel um, didn't take in the ink as, as well. Um, and this again is just for me to create some contrast in the painting and some more visual interest. Now using the same tool I'm also going to go in with some India ink and I'm going to add a few of those dots around my Oh my goodness, my brain, <laughs> my focal point. Oh my goodness, I don't know why. Well, I, I know why, I'm tired. <laughs> it's okay for me to be tired and it's okay for me to acknowledge that I'm tired. So yes, I'm adding some black dots <laughs> around my focal point. And I use India, India ink to do this because for whatever reason it just seems like the blackest black I can find and I really like very dark blacks and I love 
uh, really bright whites. So that's uh, why I work with India ink. And then, of course, here comes the star gold. <laughs> uh, no painting of mine is ever complete without me adding some star gold. And this painting seems such like such a perfect painting for it too, because that star gold next to the turquoise, oh my gosh, so nice. I love it so much. Um, and it's really interesting too, because you can only see so much of the brilliance of that gold from, you know, the camera. Um, it really doesn't do it justice. When I'm looking at it in person and moving it around in the light, it's so shimmery. Anyway, I, <laughs> I've been told I should be a, a rep for Kramer pigments because <laughs> I talk about them so much. I, and I really, it, I'm not really trying to push this paint on anyone. I just love it that much. Um, there are some other golds out there that are, you know, very nice, but for me, this one takes the cake. Like it's, it's really, really very pretty. So as you can see, I'm going to be adding a little bit of it and, uh, I'm going to try to let myself not go overboard. It's sometimes really hard for me not to get carried away with this color because I love it so much, but I do find that it adds another element of interest, not only for the fact that it's so bright and shimmery but it also adds contrast in a different way so matte colors contrast with iridescent colors and so that's another way for me to create some visual interest in this painting is by going in and doing something that contrasts with what's in the background So when I was first working on this painting, it felt complete at this point, so I started to pull off my tape and uh, moved in for a closer look. I like to pick up the painting at this point and sort of move it around so that you can hopefully see a little bit of what it is I'm talking about, you know, when that when I talk about that gold being so shimmery. I think you do see some of it, but it's just not the same as being right there in person. It is um, quite stunning. Moving in just a little bit closer, you can see how the blues and the greens and all the different colors sort of blend together to create the, that earthiness that I was talking about. Um, in a geologic abstract you typically would have more earthy colors but these are bright and bold colors and they still work for a geologic abstract at least I think so and surprise I needed to add a little bit more white by adding some of those vertical white lines I feel like there was a little bit of uh, white contrast missing so adding a little bit of that in the painting I feel makes it more complete now it's time for me to get going on next week's painting Thank you for making the time to join me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating. <laughs>